In a previous video, we took a look inside of this Ryobi Airstrike P320 nailer, and we saw that uh, this was a tool return that had been botched up, and um, as we looked into it, the wires had been routed around and really was kind of a dangerous botched up job. So I asked in the last video if, if you would like to see more. So I found a Ryobi P320 that had the blinking LED light, and I got it apart. So let's look into it. So back now, I got this airstrike disassembled, and I just had the battery hooked back up to show that we have the uh, the blinking light of death here. I only have one of the LEDs hooked up, the other one's disconnected. But sometimes the, the blinking light of death is due to this thermal fuse on this board where the resistors have overheated. And if you can see that mixed into all the goo there, and I actually had to take a little screwdriver or a small blade or whatever and just, I had to break loose some of that silicone potting there. And this can go either way, but it'll probably go this way better. So that's a thermal fuse across there. And from the looks of those resistors, I would say it, it probably did open up. Get the meter over where you can see it better. Definitely open. That's just my... My finger there into the mega ohms. It's definitely open. Resistors about one ohm. That's not open. Either one of the resistors are open, but you can tell they got hot. So, before we replace the thermal fuse, just a quick test with it jumped out. And are we still getting our white light? And we definitely are. So it's not just the fuse. But we do see that the fuse comes through. And what it does, right, is it it comes from the, the positive, which the positive does feed the board. Either way, that's why we're still getting our blinking light, right? The positive still comes to the control board. But to get through to the switch to give power, the actual high current power to the board, where it jumps and goes out to the motor, it actually has to go through that thermal fuse. So that's actually the resistors on the blue wire. So that's going to be like a little MOSFET used for like, lack of a better word, like a, a shunt or a um, dynamic brake type resistor. Now still, I'm not sure the operation picks up on these reed switches or, um, or the Hall effect sensors here. Maybe it picks up the magnet that we've seen here to know when to fire, to put the quench on the motor or the brake on the motor as the power is released. And maybe that's why sometimes those are getting overheated. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'm gonna go through and troubleshoot this board and uh, see if we can just figure out why the white light is on. I've seen some fixes on the internet for the white light and I, and I don't like it. Um, one thing in particular, I, I never like seeing somebody take these wires that's only rated for a half of an amp and put it across the actual negative or common to this motor load. So that's not safe for the wires, not safe for the switch. And it's not safe because it's more than likely going to fail either burning something up or it's going to short out and fail shorter, which is a safety issue. So to me, that's a no-no. So I don't want to see that done. I just wanted to mention that and see if there's any other way we can fix it without just replacing the control board because um, I'm thinking it may actually be in the, the microcontroller, but we'll look into it a little deeper. Yeah, more, more than likely, I'm going to forward the video to this point here where I have spent several, several hours looking at this control board and what might be going on with it. I clipped off a wire here for testing. If you see that loose, I, I actually did that for testing. Um, all my MOSFETs show good here and here. The breaking MOSFET's good, but I don't think it even comes into play in this part of it. Um, I saw no other issues. The voltages, the five volts, the little header here. They don't have a reset like usual, but anyway, it should reset when you power this off and back on. That's only battery BMSs that I like to reset sometimes because... They're always powered and they don't ever get to be cycled. Sometimes they will hang up or give a weird issue. But we see here we have uh, VPP plus 5 volts. We have ground, a data, and a clock. 
and uh, without getting my scope out, I just, I'm getting 2.5 volts on the clock, which means this is definitely a pulse on there showing like 500 hertz or so, just roughly checking it with the meter. My five volts is good. Um, I'm actually getting five volts back and on some switches and back, and including including this little Hall Effect or a reed switch board here. Five volts ground, and I can use my magnet and make those... Um, give my five volts back to the board which is here or maybe it's actually five volts and the magnet makes it drop to zero either way i went through and checked those so i looking at it from this way of course our 20 volts the push button from here comes in on this side i just checked it out zero volts and five volts and five five um those last two are coming from the reed switch and they'll go to zero with the magnet um Going around here, our LEDs, our limit switch on the end two here, which one of them I took a loose. That's going to be this limit switch here, I'm calling it. Okay, I got my zero volt showing here. I have drawn out the, um, the MOSFETs here where the black comes in. It actually goes through in series, but those MOSFETs actually check fine. It's just not getting a gate because something in the processor is not letting it. So getting back to the processor, it's a PIC a 16F1828. And these are the pins and what I was getting on the pins and nothing seems really that unusual. So there's either um, something internally that don't realize that the battery voltage is where it should be coming in as a reference or just something with the PIC itself just has malfunctioned. So there's really no repair in the board. And I was just going to keep this thing for parts. But what I may do is I may just clip all these wires off and just come back and just show you how I might would do it in a tight if I had to use it. But nothing that I would recommend. And of course, you're doing all this at your own risk. And just always realize there's risk involved using any equipment, period, and especially when you modify it. So. But I don't, like, I don't like what I'm seeing about people that don't, don't really understand what they're doing and they're taking these small tiny wires rated at a half of an amp and running across and coming across the motor to make it try to run because it's only going to run for a very short period of time at best and uh and, and short out and hurt somebody or or even get hot enough to cause a fire at worst case scenario so so what i'll do is i'll i'll clip some of these wires off the board so you can look at these how they are now you would like but I'm gonna clip them off and I'll show you what I come up with when we come back. By the way, even though our red wires are just together on the board here, I'm gonna take the board off completely. So I am gonna cut the red wires and just put them back together. So I just wanna mention that as well. Just a better look at that board if you're interested now that a lot of the wires have been taken off. No burn marks, nothing, nothing obvious. I took time to uh, look up all these MOSFETs, these chips. As far as I could tell, they check okay. But I still think something in this pick got us, which is, which is kind of typical for TTI stuff, really. So this is a 12 amp relay, so it should hold up uh, pretty well. I would like to find the smallest 20 or 25 amp relay I could. But for testing, I'm going to use this 12 amp because it'll be about 24 times greater than this switch here for current carrying. So as a test anyway, I'm going to use this small relay that'll, that'll fit easily into this spot. One about twice this size, would, it's at least the depth would probably be fine. I've already tanned my wires, so I'm going to solder them onto the relay terminals. I actually have the relay base for this relay. I just want to use the smaller, the smallest package, the smallest footprint that I can. Just so I've already tinned the wire and put some rosin flux on all the terminals, all the pins, and uh, just went ahead and re pre tin those as well as the wires. I already have my heat shrink sleeve on, of course. And this relay does not matter about coil polarity. 
and some if, if they have a built-in lighter diode it may but this one that I'm testing with it doesn't it doesn't matter All right, I'm just gonna get the heat shrink put on here so now back with a battery hooked up and first test with a 12 amp relay in place and if I hold down my handle switch and then the safety or um, contact, my contact switch. All right, I like it. I like it. The next thing I'm going to do, since this don't have a good way of quenching the arc on the motor, I'm going to take a diode and solder the cross. If you can see this, I have the cathode going towards my positive or red. And I'll have my anode going towards the white or the, the black or negative because I got them connected here. So I'm going to, I've just bent this around. I'm going to solder them right here just to, um, to quench some of that counter EMF when the motor builds that um, internal field as it's slowing down and the contacts open in the reverse polarity, this dial to quench it. By the way, make sure these pins don't, they just, um, little roll pins make sure they don't come out on you if you drive those pins out the whole assembly will come out of the gearbox but now we're going to do a final test before we reassemble it's going to add one uh, led i just tie it into the negative and come across with a um, 1k ohm resistor as soon as I do the um, the handle switch, then the LED will come on. But I did, after doing all my testing, I forgot to tie that in. All right, I'm gonna put it back together. That spring will take off on you. Pause in here to verify that I have the polarity right. I was pretty sure that these connectors were up. But we'll just verify with the battery that mine is, is towards me. So that's right. We'll just keep working our way around. This this used to go around the other way, but I can probably do it either way. We'll, we'll see. So my resistor ended up folding back up here. Fuse should be okay there. My connection's there. This is just uh, to keep dust out. It's not used any longer, of course. My dough is gonna be okay there. Not used, just put it back for dust reasons. So with the wires out of the way, let's put one screw in it. Make sure everything still looks good. I think that's out, yes, out of the way there. It's all good. I definitely have me a modified sticker on here. I'll do it on both sides because I never like to modify any system without it being known that it's been modified from original factory um, setup or design. A quick and safe test here. Being careful to keep everything out of the way. And we pull the trigger. We get our light, LED working good and it doesn't go off until we make the safety. Make the safety, it doesn't go off until the trigger's also made, so it's an and. It's an and setup. So this switch does nothing. This switch does nothing. But if you have to modify one to get by, even though I don't recommend it, that's gonna be the way to do it. When your control board's gone, because now we, we come in, we have a 30 amp in case something bad happens here. We're going through our handle switch. 
and going, it's got to go through our relay and our relay is pulled in by our switch two or our safety switch or contact, contact point switch. So the relay is taking in the load here. The only thing I didn't draw in is a diode here. I did use my amp clamp and I got about in rush up to eight amps for a short period of time on that uh, diode. So a five amp diode will probably get by an intermittent use just fine because that was in rush, not average or though so it just discharges for a brief second. So instead of someone taking this half amp rated switch and bypassing like they did, went back to the negative where the negative was going through the MOSFETs on the board. This is a little bit safer way to do it, assuming our relay holds up. So this will be a test for this one. 12 amp relay is a lot better than the switch, of course, but still we might have to upgrade to a 20 amp or 25 amp relay. In the future, I'll see if I can find a smaller package 25 amp relay. But I'm going to finish putting the screws in this and putting our um, a magazine and all back on it. And we'll be right back to test it. This interlock here keeps this switch from making, so that still works, of course. We always have a little spare tip here, which I've seen a lot of people without these and don't even realize that's a spare one there for it. I'm actually going to lubricate, lubricate this right here a little bit. I'm going to put it together and we'll see how it works. So back now with a test for the repaired Roby airstrike. We'll load up a few breads. So we'll just give the salvage airstrike a test. Well, that actually worked pretty well. So even though not the best case scenario, if you had to salvage one, if you had to use it in a tight, a cheap relay will get you going. It's a little bit of time soldering in. Definitely a do this, not that. So it's so much better than trying to use that half amp rated switch here to pull that load for that motor. So um, tremendously better off to use that relay for it. While light still works, of course. Of course, it only fires once our switch is made. Or you can go down and then pull the trigger. So it's an and operation. So both switches have to be made. You don't have the um, ability to do single fire. It's always going to be more like the semi-auto. But definitely a way to repurpose a tool that's no longer uh, useful. So if you like this video today, looking at this Ryobi Airstrike and the way we salvaged it and that quick look of uh, what not to do with the wires and that low current rated switch, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.